Hi, welcome to another edition of Ask Keith. Uh, this question uh, this week comes from a Berkeley resident. Uh, and the question is uh, to talk a little bit about the changing demographics here in Alameda County. Uh, as I was contemplating the response to that, uh, I just came back from a national conference of county elected officials from across the country. I just came back from Detroit. And uh, at that conference, the consistent issue that came up was the changing demographics that was also happening in their area. Uh, areas that um, reflect Baltimore, Chicago, Atlanta, uh, some, form, some places in Texas, and clearly here in California. And there seems to be a consistent um, somewhat pattern, if you will. Areas that um, about 30, 40 years ago that had been vacated by the majority uh, race, uh, Asians, ca uh, ca uh, Caucasians, uh, to establish uh, uh, rural and suburban communities um, uh, and kind of vacated the inner cities, kind of left dormant a lot of the infrastructure that supported uh, cities at that point in time, uh, banks, um, insurance companies, a lot of the businesses that had uh, been a core part of uh, stimulating the economy uh, went uh, also to the rural and suburban areas um, 30, 40 years ago, now uh, seem to be coming back to those core areas uh, as the communities have changed. And as such, um, the cost of living in those areas, and particularly rent and housing, has gone up so drastically in all those areas that I mentioned, including the Bay Area, uh, that it has uh, forced individuals uh, to relocate, to move uh, to other places. Uh, where those other places are nationally, uh, people are still trying to define, but we know that those areas here in the Bay Area um, have gone all the way out as far as Sacramento in terms of commute times for people who are working class at a certain economic level and especially with respect to uh, what had been basically a, um, a core group of people of color uh, as well as those who were living at or uh, below a certain poverty level who were white who are still maintaining uh, their livelihood here in the inner city. Uh, and also uh, what has become a challenge, not only in this area, but a challenge across the country, especially in areas that I mentioned that had uh, gone through the same pattern of 40 years ago, uh, predominantly the Caucasian white race moving to suburb, sub, suburban areas and establishing and, uh, and following that, uh, that migration to the to the suburbs, to, to the suburbs, and also to the rural areas where the institutions, the infrastructure that had been supporting the, infra, the inner city, meaning banks and, and other uh, uh, key stakeholders of, of business in our community. Um, what we now see is uh, that um, housing is being revitalized and increased, but at a cost that is uh, unaffordable for individuals. Uh, some of the infrastructure that had been also uh, disproportionately hit in terms of educational facilities, um, uh, high schools and, and, and middle schools that were impacted as a result of not having a real st steady or high property um, um, tax coming back to the area to support, support uh, those institutions is starting to be revitalized and coming back to uh, those cities as the transfer of, uh, of populations have moved out. Um, the one final thing kind of on this is that a lot of the newer population that is moving in back to the inner cities, not only here in Alameda County, but again in such popular places as Baltimore, uh, south side of Chicago, Atlanta, some places in Texas, and even in some places in the Deep South, uh, like Alabama, uh, we find that the, the new population is a younger population, um, not necessarily one that is uh, always family-driven, uh, but it's a younger population. The attractions to those areas, other than the infrastructure and the inner city, uh, 
is also the relocation of a lot of new businesses and or businesses, especially tech businesses, medical device businesses, uh, businesses kind of dealing with a new wave uh, of, uh, of business opportunity uh, in all of those communities seem to be established. Uh, for us uh, who have been here throughout our lives, it's been interesting watching that transformation over the last 40, 50 years uh, from being a vibrant community uh, to having the life sucked out of it uh, following the, the plight and the changes to the suburbs and the rural areas uh, and then uh, trying to um, uh, figure out ways to sustain the economies in those communities uh, while trying to also uh, get legislators to write laws that would uh, give some protection to those areas and uh, keep them from further destabilizing themselves and, uh, and, and, and leaving an inner core that it was just an abandoned uh, community uh, towards um, saying now that it's being revitalized, where are people going and how do you kind of uh, create the, the diversity of character, uh, the diversity that comes with that character, which is the, uh, not just the cultural and language uh, diversity, but also um, all of the other things that come with uh, diversity, which is, you know, a, a pretty big asset uh, to communities to have um, a difference of thought, different philosophy, difference of culture, coexisting and uh, being the best that they could be, each leveraging um, all the positive things that each uh, ethnic group or socioeconomic group or faith-based diverse group uh, brings to a community.